Hey guys, and welcome to another episode of Modified Tile Bag Scrabble. Now, in this episode, we're going to be changing things up a little bit. We're not going to actually be modifying the tile bag, but we're going to be modifying the game board. And what we're going to be doing is absolutely wild. We're going to be making every single square on the game board a quadruple word score. So it's going to just be wild, because every play is going to score like hundreds or thousands, maybe even tens or possibly hundreds of thousands of points. We're going to see final scores in the hundreds of thousands, maybe even in the millions. It's just going to be ridiculous. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump in. So I'm going to be first, and yeah, you can see, guys, this board is all yellow. And every single yellow square on this board, from the corner to the middle to the sides, is a quadruple word score. So once again, that means if you cover two yellow squares, if you make a two-letter word, you get 16 times the value of your word. If you cover seven yellow squares, then you get 4 to the 7th power, which happens to be 8,192 times the value of your word. So if you think about that, when you bingo, you're probably going to be scoring about 100,000 points. So it's going to be wild. And there's a huge premium on bingoing in this game. So I've got a kind of clunky rack, and I wonder, like, I could play 5 here, and 5 is a lot of points. Because that's what? So that's 4, 8, 9, 10 times 4 to the 4th. So that's uh, 64. So that's 2,560 points, I believe, right? Let's see. Yeah, so that's 2,560 points if I play 5. But I'm not actually sure that's worth it. Because like I said, bingoing is just so important. Because really, the longer the word you can make in this game, the better. Because each additional letter is going to be 4 times the additional score. So kind of everything we know about leave value and equity and all that stuff is flipped on its head. And like on one hand, the 50 point bingo bonus is basically irrelevant because bingos are going to score tens or hundreds of thousands of points anyway. But at the same time, bingos are actually more important because that's what's going to get you more points. So I think because of that, I should actually exchange here. So I'm going to exchange six because I think that bing uh, that maximizes my bingo percentage on my next turn. So it's a, apparently a... 2,547.3 point equity sacrifice, but, uh, and I'm not sure how much a sim will be helpful when we analyze later, but I think this is the best play. So let's see what Quackle does. Okay, so Quackle comes up with Storax, and see, because now I'm going to bingo with Donated, and it's going to score like 100,000, and this is why exchanging is the right play there. And Donated plays, I think, only right here. Yeah, it's kind of disorienting trying to figure out what plays where, because I'm used to certain landmarks on the board, like where the triple word scores are and the double letter scores. Here, every single thing is actually the same score, so I only it doesn't matter really where you place things on the board. There's no sense of what's riskier than others in terms of an opening. Everything is risky, but nothing is really more risky than others. So I think, yeah, I think this is fine. I mean, I don't have any other playable bingos, right? It doesn't... Yeah, it doesn't fit if I play it here, right? Yeah, no, it runs off the board. So yeah, I think I gotta do that. Okay, so Turfman, and, and see, I'm actually winning. I'm up already about 45,000 points. So that just shows how important it is to bingo. And I've got a good rack here. So I've got, I've kind of got an interesting decision now. I could play, yeah, see, Donated scored 147,000 plus points. <laughs> And he's played two sixes, basically. Well, Turfman was a seven, but he covered f six different quadruple word scores. And he got about 50,000 for each. So you can see with each tile that you play, the amount of points you get really just starts going up exponentially. So I could play Linters through either of these E's. I think that's really my only way that makes sense to play six tiles. So how many points that would be? I'm going to try to do the math as much as possible myself instead of relying on Quackle. So that would be seven, even if I just have to estimate it, seven times four to the sixth. So 4 to the 6th is 2 to the 12th. That's 40, 96. Oh, actually, you know what? I misspoke earlier, guys, when I said bingos get multiplied by 81, 92. That's 2 to the 13th. It's actually 2 to the 14th that they get multiplied by, right? 4 to the 7th is 2 to the 14th. That's actually 16,384. So my bad, guys. Yeah, that's why I donated is 147,000 points, because it's 9 times 16,384 plus 50. Uh, and that comes out to 147,570. So, yeah, sixes get multiplied by about 4,000, sevens by about 16,000. 
So if I play Linters, that's going to be roughly speaking seven times four thousand. It's it's just about twenty eight or twenty nine thousand points. That's actually not a ton. So I may be better off fishing. Yeah, like in this game, twenty nine thousand points really is just not a lot. Because again, if we look at look at how many points I got for this bingo, right? If I can bingo again, I'm going to be getting basically whatever your bingo, you're getting over a hundred thousand every time. So even if if we do like an expected value calculation, right? If I play off a couple of tiles for almost nothing effectively, then if I can even bingo 20% next turn, that's probably better than just settling for 28, 29,000 now. I mean, true, I'll still bingo some of the time after Linters just because I have an S. But I feel like if I fish, I mean, what's my best fish? Probably like Lens, right? Through one of these E's. I mean, this scores nothing. Like, absolutely nothing. It's only, well, it's 4 times 4 times 4 times 4. So it's 256 points, which is absolutely nothing. It might as well just be 0. Like, I could actually even exchange a tap point. I mean, I mean, 256 points does not matter. So I could consider exchanging just to leave both E's open to maximize my bingo percentage. That's actually not a crazy idea. So yeah, I think it's really just between Linters and Exchanging. And yeah, Linters, once again, is about 29,000 points. Or I could Exchange. I mean, I probably... It's tricky, because I don't want to get into a vicious cycle of fishing either. But... Huh. Yeah, I don't really want to get into a vicious cycle of fishing. But I also don't want to only score 20,000 when I have a good opportunity to try to play off a couple and score 150,000. So it's really tough. Really, really tricky. I think I'm going to try exchanging. Yeah, the question is, do I trade LS? I think I maybe just trade LS, because there's two open E's, and he can't. he's not going to be able to block both E's. So I should have a really good bingo percentage next turn if I trade LS. Like, I'm probably 50% to bingo after this. And I don't think it's worth playing SEL, because, again, SEL is only... Like, that's only 48 points. That might as well be zero. And Lens is only, like, 200. That also might as well be zero in this game. Like, the odds of this game getting decided by less than a couple thousand points are extremely slim. So I think trade two makes sense here, just to try to bingo. Dang it. So, okay, I didn't get what I wanted there. I got the J. I should pro Wait. Oh, I have re-injects! Wow, let's go! That's going to be a boatload of points. That's going to be like 200,000 points. Isn't it? That's 294,000 points. Let's go. Let's friggin' go. Wow. Okay, so yeah, now I have a commanding lead. I'm up like 300,000 points. And Quackle only is able to play off five tiles. Yeah, see, I think Quackle is actually pretty bad at this game. Just because it's still going off of its preconceived notions of equity. And, like, we saw it play Foliage for only 40,000 because, like, again, it's like using these static lead values that are on the par of, you know, single digits or maybe double digits for a blank. But, like, a 20-point lead is absolutely meaningless. You have to multiply everything by, like, an exponential power of 4 here. It's just all messed up. So Quackle's actually going to stink at this game. <sighs> um, okay, what do I do here? Uh... Guess, let's see, can I play off six tiles? That's the question. I can't, I guess, let's see, a notional doesn't fit. Anoli, if I can play off six tiles, it's probably worth it. If I can, I maybe want to exchange again and try to just keep bingoing. Like, it's, it's a very weird game in that I think the strategy is usually just to kind of exchange unless you can bingo or play at least a six. Like, I don't think it's ever really worth it to play fives, unless maybe your rack is just absolutely garbage anyway. I mean, I guess here, if I exchange, what do I, like, it's really just all about bingo percentage if I exchange. And what is my best bingo percentage leave here? Is it A-I-L-N? Maybe with this open E? Not sure. I could also just play non-oral. That might be better, just because... I mean, it's not that many points. It's only... 
Yeah, it's that same number. It's 7 times 4 to the 6. That's only like 29,000 points. Is that really worth it? It's tough to say. Do I have anything better through this M? Not really. Again, it just doesn't make sense to play like a 5 or something. If I play Nickel, I mean, this is just... It's not a lot of points, right? So that's 7 times 4 to the 4th. That's 7 times uh, 256. Yeah, it's only like 15, 1,600 points. That's nothing in this game, as I think we can already see from the scoreline after 4 turns. So it's just not worth it to do that. Uh, yeah, I mean, Antlion... I don't know. I feel like it's close to... It. There's still this S, which is which will fit. I think I should trade again. Although, I guess if I'm going to keep AILN for bingo percentage, I might as well just play off NOO and get a couple points. I mean, there's I don't think there's a good reason not to, unless I'm locking myself in. Is that really the best lead for bingo percentage? It probably is. I mean, I feel like with a floating R and E in this S, I feel like AILN probably does better than AN, I would guess, from a pure bingo percentage standpoint, which is really all I care about. So, all right, yeah, let's play off O and O. I don't want to play it here because I don't want to block my lines. Unless I want to start, I guess I could also start thinking about playing defense, too. I didn't even think about that. Like, you could, you, you can play defense in this game. But I don't know, I don't really want to play defense. Like, it doesn't seem fun to play defense. We're playing Scrabble with every square being a quadruple word square. I want to try to score a million points. That's way more fun. So, screw that. I'm not going to play defense. Uh... Alright, so where do I play off NOO? I don't know. Um, I mean, I could play Boon, I guess. Oh no. Just more points. It's hard. This is like impossible to do this math. I think Boon is more points. I mean, how many points is Boon even? Six times, like, uh, 64. It's only 300 points. <laughs> it's nothing. Yeah, that's the problem. Maybe I should play off a couple more tiles then. Like, if I can play off five and keep AN, then maybe that's better. So if I can play, like, a loin. I don't even know where to do that, though, without blocking myself. Huh. Yeah, I don't know. I don't really want to play Boon, because that blocks. How about Ono over here? Maybe that's a good play. Yeah, maybe that. Opens another floater. Does block my E and my R, which isn't ideal, but I still have an E down below. Yeah, I think I like Ono. I mean, it's like nothing. It's only about 200 points. So it's it's like no points, but I think it gives me a decent chance to bingo next turn. I guess I could also play on two down below. It's another option. Maybe that's better, just to keep those floaters open. Yeah, I think maybe on two. Why don't, uh, why don't we do that, actually? That seems like a good way to keep everything as open as possible. So yeah, we'll play on two. Alright, so plays equaled for a decent number of points. I have anvil. Does that play? Don't think so, unfortunately. That's too bad. Huh. Yeah, it's like, I'm I'm so disoriented. I'm used to this being a big hotspot on the top right, but it doesn't actually matter because everything is a hotspot. So Divalent... Huh. Dang it. Yeah, I don't think I have a bingo here. Unfortunately. So now the question becomes... Do I... Play a six? I mean, yeah, if I play... See, so yeah, if I just play, like, Anvil or something here... Maybe I have an overlap. No, I doubt it with this QI. It's going to be hard with the V. See, so if I just play, say, like, Anvil or something to this E, how many points is that? That's, uh... Four, five, six, seven, nine, ten, eleven times... Times what? Eleven times... Four thousand? So that's still fifty thousand points. That's probably worth it. I don't know. I feel like if I'm going for a million points, though, I need to keep bingoing. Because, like, we saw when I bingoed, I'm scoring 150,000. That's still a lot more than 50,000. The thing is, if I fish, like, if I play off a of V, 
for, for basically nothing. If I play off a V, then how often do I bingo? Because like an A doesn't hit anything here. I doesn't hit anything, and then O doesn't. Well, I guess an O, yeah, non ideal doesn't even fit anymore. I'm just not sure I bingo enough if I fish. That's the problem. Huh. It's annoying. Maybe I do want to just play Anvil. It also opens another 7 line. So it's not bad. Yeah, I, I don't really love the idea of playing a 6, but. Might be the best I can do here. Yeah, I just don't think I hit bingos often enough with my fishes on this rack to justify passing up 50,000 points. So I'm going to do that. I think that's... Yeah, it's 45,000. Yeah, I think I'm going to do that. Alright, so... Plays Kappas. Not a great draw here. Yowie is on this rack. Yeah, this board is getting pretty exhausted, so it's probably going to be tough to get a million points. Especially with Quackle continually, continuously playing a lot of tiles at the same time. So yeah, I guess here options are... Do I have any sixes? Or any ways to play six tiles? Probably not. I don't think so. Yowlier isn't good. I have Wirely. How many is that? It's not going to be that much, because I'm only getting five multipliers, so it's going to be... 1,024 times 13, times 12, excuse me. It's only 12,000 points. That's like nothing. Yeah, it's like literally, I don't think it's ever worth making a word. Unless you're, you normally exchange the same thing like I did with onto. Or if you're playing a 6 or a 7. So I think I should probably just exchange here and keep EL. Because, I mean, well, yeah, Y really is only 12,000 points. EO is considerably worse than EL for bingo percentage. So I think, and it also blocks some of my bingo lines, so I think that's got to be correct. And there's nowhere good to play Yaoi, and that's also still only five letters. So yeah, I'm going to trade five. I think that makes sense. Alright, yeah, see, we're gonna bingo again now, because I probably should have just, maybe I should have just fished with Anvil. I'm kind of regretting that play now, I don't even know. But okay, a uh, refact, I have sealable, sellable, and leasable all through that A. Does it matter which one I play? Probably not. I guess if I want to try to just score as many points as I can, and throw all caution to the wind and forget about defense, then I should probably try to expand to the left. I mean, the correct play is probably saleable here, just to keep things as exhausted and tight as possible. Like, that's got to be my best play from a win percentage standpoint. But I don't really feel like doing that. I want to try to bingo again, if I can. So I guess sealables, maybe here. It doesn't really matter. Yeah, that seems fine. Yeah, it doesn't really matter which one of them I play. So how many points is that? So it's eight, nine. So it's ten exactly for the bingo. Let me see if I can calculate this just for fun. So it's ten times four to the seventh, which we said was sixteen three eighty four. So it's going to be one hundred sixty three thousand eight forty plus fifty. I think it's going to be one hundred sixty three thousand eight hundred ninety points. Got it. Okay. Nice. So all right, cowing in. We're up by about four hundred thousand now. If I can get two more bingos, then I would score a, th a million. But I don't think I'm going to be able to get two more bingos down. This board is just too exhausted already. Like, there's already very few places to bingo. And here... Yeah, so I don't think... Can I actually play six off? I'm not sure. Actually... Yeah, I don't actually think I can play off six tiles. It might is only five. If I trade, I guess I'd play off I trade I I M for bingo percentage. I don't really care about scoring tiles too much. Although if I can bingo with some scoring tiles, then that will obviously inflate my score. Like we saw with re injects, right? I mean I 
scored a lot more, even for that one bingo, just because it had the Jace. There is something to be said for still keeping scoring tiles that are good for bingoing, so maybe I do keep the M. So if I trade II, maybe that's a good move. The pool is pretty constant heavy, it looks like... Well, not that constant heavy, actually. 7 vowels, 13 consonants, so I think that's fine. I think trade 2 is reasonable here. And at the minimum, even if the board gets more exhausted and I can see that I can't bingo, I should hopefully have a 6 after the trade 2. Because I don't think I can play off six tiles now. Yeah, I don't think so. Iridium almost fits through that U and equal, but not quite. So, yeah, let's do that. Alright, vision, migrated. Dang it, it doesn't fit. Emigrated, okay. Not gonna bingo. So, well now though, I have this line on the left, so it's tempting. I mean, Quackle's probably going to play there. It's probably still worth it to try to go for something, though, by fishing off the G. So let's see, I hit a lot. I hit with an A. Well, do I? Readmit isn't going to fit. Huh. Yeah, readmit isn't going to actually fit. E hits with demerit or many other things. H, I guess not. I hits timid or... Yeah, maybe I don't hit enough. O doesn't hit... R doesn't hit. I don't think S hits. Misrated doesn't fit either. Yeah, maybe I don't hit enough with a G fish. Hmm. So maybe I just cash in then. Yeah, maybe I just cash in with my six. That's probably a more sensible play. I mean, that's still going to score like a lot of points. That's still going to score like 45,000 points. That's probably a better play. Because he could also bingo. Like, I mean, I, I don't think I can, I'm in danger of losing, but. I don't know, I mean, there's, like, an H and W and Z. Like, if he plays Showbiz or something on the left, I mean, how many would he get? Like, it's worth actually considering that, because that would be 4, 8, 9, 10, 20-ish. That would be, like, 20 or so times 16,000. Yeah, he'd probably get about 300 to 350,000. Probably 350,000. So he could actually almost catch up. That's wild. Like, my lead is not entirely secure. If he bingos with, yeah, with Showbiz or something similar, he's actually going to almost catch up. So I think this is the right play. I didn't realize that, I, I mean, I sort of was starting to dismiss the possibility of him ever catching up, but it's actually possible. Yeah, that's wild. Like, I have a 400,000 point lead nearly. It is not secure. I should probably watch out for emptying the bag, too, because he could still bingo through this A with something. Okay, well now... Oh, I drew the blank now. Okay, so Swayer comes down. I'll break 700,000. Maybe 7... No, probably not 750. I mean, endgames in this variant are just going to be, like, impossible. Like, I just can't. I mean, I guess he's threatening Azoth for a bit through this A and O, but I mean, how many really is that? Because he's only getting three bonus squares. So that's 17 times... 64? I mean, that's only 500... No, it's only... It's not, that's 1,088 points, I believe. So it's not nothing, but it's not a lot. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, I could play... Oh, maybe high. No, well, Heine here... Scores decently. If I can play off 6, though, it'll be a lot. Like, I don't think I should worry about playing off Azoth if I can play off 6. And I'll score more by playing like a 6 and a 1 as opposed to a 5 and a 2 or 4 and a 3, right? Just basically because of the principles of exponents and multiplication, right? Like if you think about it, 4 to the 6th plus 4 to the 1st is a lot more than 4 to the 5th plus 4 to the 2nd. So just because 4 to the 6th is literally 4 times bigger than 4 to the 5th. So I'm much better off playing one longer word and one shorter word than two middling length words. It's just worth keeping that in mind. I don't see a way for me to play off six tiles. So I think Heine makes sense. And then I'll be able to go out with RU next turn. Yeah, that'll probably be about, let's see, seven times four to the... Yeah, that's not going to be that many points. It's actually only going to be like 7,000 points. So I'm actually going to barely break... Will I even break? I, I do want to try to break 700,000. Wait, so that's going to be 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Oh, no, it'll be 8. Oh, it'll be 8,000. Okay, yeah, I'll break it. 
barely. Okay, he does play Az Azoth. It is a 10 88, so good math by me. Um, alright, and now, what's my best out? This is actually a fun little challenge. So, no matter what I do, I'm getting two bonus squares. Is Rum here? So, Rum is 3, 4, 5 times 16, so that's 80. 80 for Rum, so I'll finish with about 701,000. Probably can't get more. I, mean, I doubt it. No, I'm not saying that. It's actually not even that easy for me to go out otherwise. So I think I'm going to just go ahead and play Rum. And there you have it, guys. So final score, 701,056 points for me. 275,556 points for Quackle Speedy Player. And yeah, I think this game highlighted, if nothing else, uh, interesting deficiency, right, in Quackle Speedy Player. Uh, and I actually wonder if Champ would have played the same way, because I think even if you run a simulation, it's going to be defective, because simulations are always assuming that whatever plays they simulate are made according to the principles of equity. And the principles of equity just completely break down here. Because leave values, as they're commonly understood on a regular Scrabble board, have no meaning on a board where every square is a quadruple word score. So I think basically just every part of the analysis breaks down. So, so yeah, obviously if I generate choices here in my opening play, right, 5 comes out on top because it scores 2,560 points. And the equity of EUI is like minus 9 or something like that. It's going to be completely meaningless compared to the actual scores that we're getting here. Like... The, all the equity factors need to be, be inflated by, like, uh, literally a factor of four to the whatever power of the number of tiles you're not keeping on your rack, or something like that. I'm not, I'm not even sure that's correct. It needs to be inflated by some power of four. I know that much. Um, but, but yeah, so this is cl it's clearly better to exchange. I think donated was my only bingo. Yeah, so that's best by about 10,000 points. Uh, and again, this is not going to come up here, right? Yeah, because Linter's is 28,000 points, but I felt like my odds of bingoing if I exchange and scoring 150,000. Because uh, again, basically any bingo, right? Even if it's just 7 points, if you multiply that by 16,000, that's still just about 110, 120,000 points. So you're basically guaranteed to get at least 120,000 points whenever you bingo. Um, and here, since I bingoed with the J, I get uh, 294,692 points for one play. So with one... Oh, look at this guy. So with one play, I scored more than Quackle got in the whole game. Because Quackle got 275,556 points for the whole game, and I got 294,962 for just re-inject. So that's just wild. And that really just shows the power of playing long words, and especially if you can somehow get a really long word, or a, a really a bingo in particular, with a high point tile, just you're going to score so many dang points. So, yeah, crazy, crazy stuff. I don't know what I should have done here. Yeah, I saw non-oral for... 28,000. Maybe that's a better play. I don't know. ANIL might not be a strong enough leave to, to justify basically scoring nothing. Hard to say. Um, yeah, I don't know. Maybe non oral would have been a little bit better. I didn't end up bingoing anyway. And uh, yeah, I didn't miss anything here. There's a bunch of ways to score 45,000 and change. Uh, keeping the E is probably best for bingo percentage. Um, so yeah, I played Anvil up here just to keep things a bit more open to try to ramp up the score as much as possible. Is there any way for me to play 6? Oh, I didn't see Oil Way. Is that worth it? It might be worth it. I don't know. EI is not bad, to be honest, especially this pool is a little bit constant heavy. Like, EI might not be much worse than EL for bingo percentage, to be honest, with this pool. So if it's not worse, then Oilway, we might as well take the 12,000 points. So maybe a slight mistake there. Yeah, sealable. Many bingos here. Sealable, saleable, leasable. So another 163,000 points or so added to my score. Here, yeah, I mean, this is a terrible play, right? You're only scoring 9,000 points. And again, I keep saying things like only 9,000 points, which I know sounds stupid, right? Because 9,000 is so many points, if you think about regular Scrabble. It's inconceivable. It's utterly inconceivable. But in this game, 9,000 is just not a lot of points. So, yeah, I mean, here, like, the equivalent of 9,000 in this game is probably, like, 12 in regular Scrabble. If that, even. It's, it's just nothing. So, yeah, I think exchanging makes sense. And here, yeah, I decided to just cash in. Uh, yeah, readmit is also there, but getting rid of the G is good. And also, like I said, the game is not over here. He could play showbiz for like 350,000 or so and catch back up. So I have to be careful. Heine here. Um, 
Oh, I missed inherit for a few more. Okay, that would have been about a thousand more. Why is that a thousand more? Because I'm covering the same number of bonus squares, but I have two, I have an extra point in my word, right? Because the base score of inherit, since I add the I and the T to my tiles played is nine, whereas Heine is only eight. So when you magnify that one point difference by a factor of a thousand, that's where you get a difference of about a thousand points. So uh, inherit would have scored about a thousand more. I'm not sure I would have gone out. I guess I still have you need to go out. So yeah, this would have been a better play. Um, but that's, uh, that's pretty tricky to see. Uh, and then is run my best out. It is. So yeah, overall pretty well played game, I think. I mean, it's so hard to know how well I played. Like, I don't think I can really simulate anything. I mean, like, if I, because if I sim this, right, I assume, I'm actually curious. Like, if I sim this versus what I played with, with my exchange, and I am sure without simming it that exchanging is better. Like, what comes out on top? Okay, so, okay, so exchanging actually does sim better. So that's interesting. I feel like, wow, yeah, that's such a huge difference. That's interesting. Because I, I would have thought that the sim might not show the full level of difference. So, like, I'm curious to see then, what about, this was a turn I wasn't sure about, onto versus non-oral. So if I eliminate any, everything else and I put on onto, then what comes up better? Wow, so onto comes out better again here, but it's really close. See, so why are the win percentages the same? Okay, now they're not. So yeah, now non-oral is simming slightly ahead. So maybe the sim is kind of reliable here. I'm not really sure, because I thought that Quackle was always assuming... Yeah, I guess it's sort of reliable, because Quackle always assumes, right, with the sim, that you're going to play whatever the best equity play is on the next turn. It's not like a recursive sim, where it's going to keep simming each subsequent turn. And I'm just so much more likely to have a higher scoring equity play because equity is sort of equivalent to points in this game, basically, because lead values are going to be negligible compared to the play scores. So I guess I, it is sort of pretty accurate representation then of how many points I'm scoring on my next turn. So, so yeah, maybe this is accurate. It's interesting. I don't know. I feel like it wouldn't be entirely accurate, but it probably gets the right idea. So it's saying that non-oral... Would have been a little bit better. So yeah, if I go to details box. So our next turn. Interesting. Okay, so I guess what it's saying is. Yeah, so it's mostly because of the opponent's turn. Because yeah, our next turn, I do average about 30,000 more after onto. Right? I bingo about 20,000 or 20% more. And that alone, because bingos are going to average like 100,000 or something, maybe even more over a non-bingo. So that gives me 20,000 plus right there of expected gain. I guess 30,000 or so, if, according to Quackle. And also just in general, even though I don't bingo, I'll likely have a six or a longer word than after non-oral. So I average about 30,000 more after onto. But interestingly, my opponent averages a lot fewer after non-oral, which kind of makes sense because I'm blocking a lot of bingos, right? It's all, it's pretty much all in this bingo percentage, guys, right? Because e even though it's only about a 4% difference, when that 4% difference is of something that would score like 150,000 points. That's 6,000 right there, if you do the math. And it's saying about 8,000 difference. So that pretty much accounts for the majority of the difference. Like, this game is all about bingoing. So it's just really, really interesting and, and so counterintuitive if you're used to regular Scrabble. Yeah, very cool. So I guess non-oral is slightly better, if this is to be believed. So yeah, I'm curious then, last one I'll sim. So Anvil, what if I put in... Just playing off the V then. Because I was thinking about doing that. Like, let's see. Wow, so yeah, apparent well. No, it looks it likes Anvil still. Yeah, I feel like 45,000 was a little bit too much to give up. I didn't think I quite bingoed often enough. It's very close still, apparently. Interesting. Huh. Yeah, no, now Anvil is coming out on top. Because, I mean, 45,000 is still a pretty significant chunk of points in, in this game. Like, nine or 10,000 is kind of meaningless, but 45,000 is still a lot of points. And now Rev is back on top. Interesting. So, yeah, let's, uh, let's only been through about 600 iterations, so I'm not sure how reliable it is. But, yeah, let's see the details box. I gotta click out of it. Yeah, I let it run off video for a thousand full iterations. And, yeah, so it's saying our next turn after Rev, we average 106,000 and change, which is about, about 43,000 more than Anvil. So it actually just about washes out, which is pretty crazy. 
So we bingo about half the time after rev, which is 30% more than anvil. So just that alone leaves us to average 43,000 more points on our next turn compared to anvil. So that just about offsets the initial 45,000 points we're getting for anvil. And our opponent scores marginally better after anvil than, than rev, which makes sense because we're opening a new sevens line. So yeah, it ends up all basically coming out in the wash, which is pretty crazy. Um, but, but yeah, no, I think if, if nothing else, this just shows you how, uh, how important it is in this game to just go all out for bingos. But, but yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty much it. So once again, final score, guys, in this game. Mac, 701,056 points. Quackle Speedy, 275,556 points. I feel like I'll need to try this again with Champ. Speedy's probably going to be pretty easy to beat just because it's not going to be fishing nearly enough. Um, but it'll be pretty interesting to play this against Champ and, uh, and see what kind of difference that makes. So, uh, so maybe next time we'll have that. But, uh, but yeah, that's it for this one, guys. So, uh, hope you guys got a kick out of this. Uh, definitely, um, I guess just a disclaimer, I, I should have maybe put it at the beginning, but, uh, do not, uh, do not try the strategies in this uh, game, in regular Scrabble, it's a very different kind of game. I, I should probably have the disclaimer for all of these modified tile bag or modified board Scrabble games, right? It's uh, I'm sort of just going on the fly here. I don't entirely know what I'm doing. I don't practice this stuff for my tournament games. Um, and definitely, you know, take everything I say in these videos with a, with a grain of salt, especially as it applies to your regular Scrabble game. Um, so that, that, uh, that should go without saying for all these videos, but, uh, but yeah, hope you guys still enjoyed this, uh, got a kick out of it and maybe got something out of it one way or another. And, uh, and yeah, that's it for this one. So I'll see you soon for the next episode of Modified Tile Bag and Board Scrabble. Have a good one, guys. Thanks again. Bye-bye.